Well, we're off. So we uh, are leaving Driftwood, Texas here. Heading about an hour north to the Bass Pro Shops uh, Service Center in Round Rock, Texas. So behind me, uh, we've got the 2018 Tracker Heritage Edition that we just picked up eh, about a month ago. So we've got those uh, boys today. Um, we're gonna be heading up there to have them install a few bits of electronics and a few other things uh, on the tracker. You would think it'd be a pretty standard day for them, uh, but <laughs> not with what we've got in store for them. All right, well, let's just dive right in here. So the main unit is going to be this, the Tom Mann Super 60 from Hummingbird, developed in Eufaula, Alabama in 1971. So Tom was taking the old Heath kit units and actually customizing those to better work with the outboards of the day. And he developed this thing, uh, went commercial and really took off. Came in the Super 60 and also the Super 30, and you saw it in just about every bass boat for 20 years. Now up on the bow, we're going to have two different units here. So first off is this Defend Color CLC. This can actually be found in the 1987 Bass Pro Catalog. And it was marketed as the first ever color LCD. We've also got this, the Bottom Line Side Finder Scout. Now it doesn't tell the depth, but it will absolutely tell you if you've got any fish to the side, underneath docks, or around piers. Mounted on the troll motor, it can scan at 360 degrees. All right, no power holes here, but we do have this. The Anchormate 2 Anchor System. It's actually going to be a bow mounted winch that can deploy a 10 pound mushroom anchor. All right, well, we haven't mentioned GPS yet, but the next best thing is this the classic Aquameter Compass. We're going to kick it old school here, and this thing is going to help us navigate the lakes and reservoirs of Central Texas. All right, here we've got the Combo Selector Color Selector from Lake Systems, designed by Dr. Lauren Hill. That actually tell you the best color to use and also the pH and temperature of the water you're fishing. We've also got this, the Boat Mount Kit from Fenwick. Now, these are going to be two different companies, so I don't know if these two are going to be compatible, but hoping for the best. While we're not going to have GPS on this boat, I'm sure we're going to want to mark some spots after we catch the fish. And the Lindy Markabui Rack Pack is going to help us. Comes with three markers you can throw over the side in yellow, black, and orange. All right, so we just dropped off the uh, tracker at the boat service center. Uh, it's heading about a week or two. We'll have it back. There she is. Uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, <laughs> I showed the guys electronics, and um, of the mechanics, only one uh, recognized um, that Tom Mann's Super 60. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully everything works. We get it on. Obviously some of that stuff is at this point 40 years old. So I'm hoping uh, that it all works and that it's functional. And uh, if it is, um, in two weeks uh, from now we will be on the water uh, kicking it old school. So, All right. Goodbye, Bass Pro. We'll, uh, we'll see you in two weeks. talk a little bit about why why are we doing this why did I trade in my Skeeter 150 Merc uh, for a quite essentially a, a souped up John boat what's the uh, what's the plan here you know it's kind of funny but fishing uh, pretty much my whole life uh, the memories that I most think about aren't the biggest fish I've caught they're not the most recent catches that I've made it's actually those first catches that I ever made I recall vividly uh, growing up fishing out in Howard County, Maryland, a little private farm pond. 
It was stocked with bass and no fishermen ever actually fished it. I remember heading out there one uh, Saturday. I had all my new lures for Bass Pro Shops that I took with me. And I got on a little paddle boat and started going around the lake. So the first fish I ever caught was a little 12 inch green monster. He came up and ate a Strike King Bill Dance grass frog. It was a little edge of uh, mill foil and he came up, grabbed it, and took it down about five foot. Water was crystal clear and I could see him down there with my lure shaking it in its mouth, sort of like a, uh, like a dog with a chew toy. I was so awestruck by that sight that I'd never seen before, that moment that I literally froze. Couldn't set the hook, couldn't move. Little bass was down there shaking it, trying to kill that thing for what felt like a couple minutes. In reality, it was probably a couple seconds. Uh, he ended up letting go. I never hooked him. But in that moment, I was definitely hooked on the sport of, of bass fishing. You know, a lot of kids had heroes that were baseball players or football players. Mine were actually the professional fishing show hosts. Guys like Bill Dance, Jimmy Houston, Roland Martin. I, I think for a time that Chunkin' and Winding, the theme song to Jimmy Houston Outdoors was really the theme song for my youth. I, I, just, I just love those guys and every Saturday morning if I wasn't on the water, I was watching them on the water. I remember explicitly my first ever Bass Pro Shops catalog. It was a 1987 master catalog and I got it in the mail. I mulled over that thing for weeks figuring out what was going to be my first order. I can still probably tell you what was in my first order. Um, I think I had a Bill Dance Grass Frog. I, think I had a Shoestring Tornado Spinnerbait. I had a Pose Super Cedar in a hot tiger color. So those are the days for me that I think about. Also when I think about YouTube and I think of the kinds of channels that are out there, there is not only is there a ton of content on bass fishing, there's also a ton of great content. When it comes to the latest technology, whether it's boats, or rods, or reels, or lures, there are a ton of YouTubers out there doing an excellent job. You go to you know, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, Tackle Warehouse, doesn't matter. You find the latest lure that came out, and honestly, probably within six hours, some YouTuber with a million followers is posting a video detailing how it works. For me, thinking about what my passion is, and I've always been a sucker for the forgotten. You know, I don't care if it's an old record that, you know, by some country singer who's probably no longer alive and nobody listens to, or some lore that, you know, came and, and went and was in and out of fashion. I've always been a sucker for that kind of stuff. But for me, that's when I decide to develop retro bassin. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to take those those forgotten times, those forgotten lures, rods, reels, even electronics, and bring them to today. All right, so we can't go fishing today because what? Huh? Where's the boat? Um, back in our place. It's the Bass Pro Shop's getting fixed. But we'll get our boat back in about, what, like a week? Yeah. It's old timings. It's got a steering wheel, look at that bike. Oh yeah. Whoa, steer, steer. Jung, jung. That's the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. This is, this is sweet. 